Hi, I'm Nikun Pacheski, and I'm present on basic bookkeeping. Sorry. Uh, slide's not working very much. Um, I have been doing uh, bookkeeping business for over two years. I have earned, also have a master's in accounting, and so my scope of practice is a little higher than bookkeeping, but I offer this as a service for my clients. Sorry, I'm not used to using Canva version of this. My, yeah. So what is bookkeeping? Bookkeeping is a process of recording, classifying, organizing financial transactions for a business. This is um, crucial for any business to understand how they're doing and how um, for them to grow and to stay compliant for um, the state and federal government. Um, so the recording, Recording uh, is to write down each expenses that happens. This can look differently for each and every business. Some businesses will do transaction by transaction, while others, such as restaurants or stores, will conduct end of day transactions. What is classification? Classification is what does each transaction actually do? There are general classifications such as or overseen ones such as supplies, cash, accountability, account payables, um, what the business owes and to who, account receivable, who the businesses, who owns the businesses, sales, rental, utilities, and the list can go on. This can vary from business to business, um, what type of classifications they will have. And then there's the overview of the organizational transactions. They can have business spend what they're spending on and the revenues they're earning. Um, it's very important for a business to understand if they're making a profit, if they can expand, if they need to cut costs, if they need to hire more help to increase increase their profit, and if they can actually afford to hire out. And what does that look like? The purpose of bookkeeping is to track income and expenses ensure the regulatory compliance and, and provide overview of decision-making processes. One of the things businesses uh, seem to put the bookkeeping in the back burner when it's actually one of the um, things that lead to businesses to grow and know what's happening. Are there any questions on an overview of businesses right now? Of bookkeeping. I'm going to continue on. One of the main things that Bookhuman does is gives you key financial statements. And these statements can help you see how the business is doing. One of the biggest uh, financial statements is income statements. This shows um, the company's revenue and expenses over a certain period. And it's, the purpose is to show the business has a profit. Um, and this explanation can be described, it can be described as a business report card to see if they're making or losing businesses. An income statement is one of the um, more common statements that are given. I have a few more of that. So this is a um, example of an income statement. So their net sales, the cost of sales, the gross profit, how much it costs to operate, the general expenses, so this checklist, this is their net income. These are the other incomes this uh, company has, this loan company, and their losses. So this is a great way to have a, a large overview of um, how the income is, how the business is doing. Sorry, sorry. This is also another financial, the balance sheet. It is a snapshot of the company's financial position at any specific time. This, this is what the business owns, owes their assets and who owes them the liability and the owner equity. A lot of times um, 
owners will put money into their business and see how much they actually earn back or if they're able to gain money back. Um, it's also a way to photo, it's a best way to explain she has a photograph of what the business owns and in a particular moment. Uh, this is a good way to check um, periodically, see how you're doing. These are other examples of it. It's similar to an income statement, just a little more in depth usually. This is a cash flow statement. A cash flow shows the money coming in and out. It helps understand the cash being generated and being used in the business. This is like a checkbook showing how the cash moves in and out. So this is just cash based uh, of revenue and expenses. Are there any questions? Nakuma, sending in here, I, I have a couple of questions uh, mm -hmm. and just um, some points to make. And please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but going going back, for example, to the profit and loss, um, that, uh, to the income statement, that's also called a profit and loss as well. Yes. Yeah. So so folks may may hear that that statement referred to either as an income statement or a profit and loss. So just be aware it's the same thing. And I uh, I don't know if you're going to go into this, Nakuma, but um, uh, uh, profit and loss are income statements. They can There can be income statements and profit and loss for different periods of time. I think you showed in one for a, 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 an example of an annual profit and loss, which just shows how mm -hmm. the business did for that year. But um, are you going to talk more about those? I don't want to jump the I gun. I didn't go very in depth in that aspect. I was I didn't want to um, throw too much at one time. Gotcha. No, no, I understand. Yep. Yeah. yeah I understand. Um, but I just wanted to clarify that sometimes it it could be referred to by by two different names, um, and that, as no doubt you'll explain too that um, the income statement and the cash flow statement and the balance sheet are all really important financial statements for a business, but but they also tell a little bit of a different story that's happening with, with the business in terms of profitability and how one is managing the cash in their business. Am I on the right track with that? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, great, thanks. That's all I gotta say. I, Nakuma, I had a question um, and you might get to it in a bit, but I'm wondering if you'll be recommending some programs for um, putting these together. Do you have a list of programs to okay. use? Yeah, near the end. Great. And just a comment, um, Canva seems to be showing uh, some kind of blacked out boxes on my end. I don't know if there's anything okay. you can do with that. It might be how your Zoom is coming through. Um, just wanted to highlight that. No, I don't, I'll try. I'll see what's going on. Yeah. So I was going to go overview some of the basic terms that involve bookkeeping. Um, these are terms that are used. Um, uh, tra uh, between transactions are categorized into different classifications to organize the financial data systematically. Uh, there are common bookkeeping transaction classification for small business owners should understand. Um, so one of the big ones is assets. What is the business assets? These are what the business owns of value and, it, and expect to provide in the future. These can be anything from buildings, computers, if you're a work from home type person, your printers, depending on the cost of it. Um, Work from home by Fifth Harmony Echo. featuring Thai dollar sign on Amazon Music. Family office, so there's many things going on in this office. Um, so yeah, assets can be anything between their their equipment, um, vehicles, depending on the business. Um, a lot of restaurants will have their um, kitchen, kitchen things. Um, so assets can be anything the business owns. So they can be the cash, account receivables, the inventory or prepaid expenses. Um, an asset can be um, insurance, 
in a sense, if you're buying long term, uh, things within that. Fixed assets are property, plant, vehicles, machinery, and office furniture. A lot of times with assets, we need to, uh, especially with the long-term assets, we need to um, categorize for the depreciation of them. I'm not gonna go into that here, but it's just something to keep aware of. Intangible assets are trademarks. If you have a logo, if you write a book, those type of things, those are patents and trademarks that need to be um, kept as an asset, continuing an asset. Liabilities are obligations the business needs to settle in the future. This can be loans. These can be um, accrued expenses. These will be tax payable, um, especially if you're doing payroll and whatnot and sales tax. Those are also considered liabilities. Long-term are mortgages, bond payables, um, if you're leasing um, larger equipment. The equity represents the owner's interest in the business after liabilities are settled. So owner's equities can be this is, uh, can be capital distribution, uh, retain earnings or dividends if the company has um, profit share uh, shareholders or um, investors within it. Revenue is the income generated from a normal business expense uh, operations. Uh, these are for, done from the primary um, business activities. This can be uh, usually done by sales or service rendered, um, depending on which kind of business or both, depending on the business. A great way to do is like a hairdresser will sell, usually will sell products on top of doing their service. And so they actually generate income in two different ways. Others will just be sale based and others will just be service based. Non-operating interest revenues can be um, interest income, rental income, or same assets. Going back to the hairdresser um, example, many hairdressers will have uh, chairs to rent from other hairdressers. So those are actually rental income that you can get, you can receive that way. They can also gain um, from asset sales. So if you have multiple properties, you can sell rent in that way. Expenses are incurred in the process of earning revenue. So this can be usually uh, operational expenses, usually the overhead expense, and this can be you know renting a place, internet, cell phone, um, wages and salaries for self or employees, supplies needed, and the dep depreciation of larger assets. The cost of goods sold uh, is a direct cost attribution of production of goods sold for the company. This can be raw material, direct labor, or manufacturer overhead. A lot of times, if you're making things, people, uh, small business will make aspects, and that's your raw goods. The direct labor entailed to create product or whatnot, and the manufacturing overhead, this can be. Um, the cost of just the supplies needed to do that. Non-operational costs, primary actually are interest expense on loans or debt and the loss from an asset sale. Not always do we sell things back at market or the price that we received or we bought it at. And that is actually an expense that you can um, give to annotate for. The gains and losses are increasing, decreasing the equity uh, for the transaction. Um, so gains is when the increase in equity from the transaction is not related to core business expenses. So if we if you bought an equipment and you're able to sell it above book value, that's a gains you received. Or gains in investment, um, you can gain um, a lot of times business will invest in other businesses or in other aspects. And they, there's a gain in that in that part. 
There's also losses if you're selling an equipment that is below cost or has depreciated or in a loss in investment. Those people who are growing a business and trying to do different avenues within it. Are there any questions? Over Melissa. Um, yeah, I'm wondering, and I, I don't know if you'll get to this, but I, um, I'm wondering about de like depreciation. Is that something that you you do keep track of in the bookkeeping separately? Like anything that you sold below the price that you bought it for, you would record that depreciation amount. You should you should take write the depreciation amount. A lot of times, the depreciation is also done with larger. Um, if you're making larger purchase of like over five thousand dollars, you mm -hmm. as a percentage you depreciate every year. Um, but I'm not covering it that in depth in this particular presentation. It's more of an overview. Okay, cool. Thank you. So, um, just to jump in here for a quick second, Melissa Nakuma, um, for for other people who may not understand what depreciation is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but when you buy assets for your business, equipment, things of that nature, you're allowed to depreciate those, the value of that over time, and that is a benefit to your business, right? So when you depreciate that equipment over time, and if there's like a schedule you follow with the IRS, and so... Um, it it can reduce the amount of taxes you have to pay because you're 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 depreciating something and it looks like an expense on your on your profit and loss but it's not really something you're writing a check for right it's like you 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 can take this deduction that the government gives you and it can reduce your the, the amount of taxes you have to pay Basically. okay and then so then is there a, a formula for calculating or measuring the depreciation yes and does it... <laughs> there is but i that might be um um bookkeeping 201 and i don't okay. think you're going to get into that today but yes and, and, and but the irs has information on that so there's different and different different assets are 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 depreciated differently over different amounts of time like a computer versus land for example yeah. um so it's that is definitely worth speaking to um, a bookkeeper accountant about specifically. Oh, thank you. Sure. Um, Nakumi, do you mind if, gets complex. Yeah, yeah. Nakumi, do you mind if I just jump in and and ask? Go for it. Yeah. Um, are you um you went through uh, a a good list of um important terms in there with with some concepts are there any at, other questions or something that confuse folks or you're not quite you didn't quite understand about some of the terms that that nakuma mentioned just so you we can address that now so uh we can build on that your understanding as as your um, presentation goes on i guess yeah. I have a question just in regards to, well, you differentiated the, um, I forget what you called them, but the asset or the the ones that were due within a year and then ones that were more long-term. Um, do you keep track of those separately as well in the bookkeeping yes. and then? <laughs> yes, you, you, have, you have like a- I'm just a time do like trying to liabilities. follow like- yeah, so you have an over overview of a liability, like the yeah. your main thing you have current and long term. And so your current liabilities are like your electric bill, your water bill, whatnot, and maybe your long term liabilities if you're renting or you're buying a space for your business, that would be your long term liability of your mortgage because you're gonna continue it on. But you're paying it monthly, it's gonna be a five yeah, year, okay. ten year, thirty year program. And so you're gonna keep keep those two separate so okay. you can continue to see hopefully, you know, your your insurance will be done within the year and then your mortgage will be there for five years. So you're, you're gonna track those separately. Similar to depreciation okay, in a sense. Um, yeah. So you're and, gonna track, yeah, go for it. No, go, go ahead, Nakuma, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was gonna say, I was like, um, so you separate those and even with depreciation, you'll have your short-term depreciation as we were talking about, like your laptop would depreciate within five years, but if you have a vehicle, it would take yeah. 10 years to depreciate. So you're to keep those depreciation separate. So you're looking at your long-term and your short-term. Um, Liabilities per se. Okay. Thank you. 
and I, and I like to think of depreciation as a gift that the government gives you, right? Because it can reduce your tax burden. Um, and and Nakuma, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, but just to go back to in case people don't quite understand what a the value of a balance sheet is, the value is that it shows what your business is currently worth. And it's just it, as of like that day, you're, you could do a balance sheet tomorrow and you could have different information in there, which affects the the value of, of your business. So um, just, just wanted to mention that and Nakuma, if I'm wrong, you know, correct me. Uh, and okay. If you want to add anything, please, please do so. Is it okay to ask a question? Of course, please do. Uh, um, thanks, Nikuma. Um, like my daughter has a brand new business and she hasn't mm -hmm. done any like as of like a month ago. So do you help people like get that like asset thing set up from the beginning, like and like ask them, okay, what did you put into this? And like like she bought, she's a yoga teacher, so she bought like bolsters and she had to pay to get an LLC. Like, so she has legal fees um, and then she has pays rent. So like, do you help people like start off on the right track? Cause I could see where somebody new might get a program like QuickBooks and like start putting stuff in the wrong place. So is that something you guys kind of help get people lined up at the beginning to go correctly forward? Is that something uh, the micro business does to help with uh, charts of accounts? Yeah, so, so Darcy, are you asking, is that something that Google does or is that like something that micro business offers or is that oh, just something no, bookkeeper. that bookkeepers would do generally? A bookkeeper, a bookkeeper yes, a, a, as a brand yeah. new business and you don't know anything about a balance sheet income statement, like nothing, like you don't even have your checking account set up because you're only worried about what you're doing and not the business side. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, like that's you, what you that gave me lot, the idea actually. to start the business was I'm gonna teach yoga to everybody. Um, so I'm just noticing she's like not really dialed in, and so I was trying to help her. Like, well, you need a bookkeeper. Well, what do I need that for? Can I do that later? You know? And I'm like, yes. well, no. You should start off right away with uh, Nakuma, uh, uh, right? Yeah, there, there should there should be. Uh, I mean, you as a bookkeeper, you see people in a different level. You see people who are uh, proactive and as they start their business, we get a bookkeeper. You see people who uh, attempt their bookkeeping for the first three years and then need that help. And you have people who wait till the end of the year when taxes are due to find a bookkeeper. A bookkeeper will help with that. Um, a lot of bookkeepers that I've worked with will actually do different versions of it where they can take on a monthly fee or they will do mm -hmm. what they a lot of times people do a vip day where they'll set it up for the person and teach the person to maintain it themselves because yeah. not all business depends on where they're at they may not want to they may not can't may not be able to afford their or their transactions aren't that in depth where they need to pay somebody to do it they can kind of mm -hmm. manage it themselves especially in the beginning so it depends on the bookkeeper but yeah the bookkeepers are really can set that up for the person in quickbooks and help with that Super. That sounds that sounds really good. <laughs> Darcy, I'll also just mention that personally, you know, we advocate and people to be proactive and get set up with a bookkeeper in advance because um it's to their best, it's to their benefit long term. And you know, I think it's a lot easier to start at the beginning and rather than ask a bookkeeper to go back and over the last year's worth of income and expenses and sort through that stuff you're basically asking them to do extra work to get you organized when yeah. you know, it's a lot easier to start at the beginning um also you know a lot of people tend to think oh i just need to do bookkeeping uh because i need to get my taxes completed at the end of the year and while that's true that's that's also a bit of a false thinking in a way because you're 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 bookkeeping and the information that you're keeping track of and the information that it's providing you um really allows you to make financial decisions about your business in real time you know if you go back uh, six months and say oh i just caught up on my bookkeeping and look what happened in 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 july well it's too late to save august you know when it's january of that year right so but you can save future months by knowing what you're doing in the current moment with your bookkeeping so it allows you to make financial decisions and i would say that's the the one of the 
the true benefits of keeping track of your bookkeeping. Yeah, that's a really good point. Try to remember to say that, repeat that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ask ask your ask your daughter if she remembers what she spent on her living expenses two months ago. And if she yeah. can't say exactly what she did, then you can say, okay, well, you just proved that you need bookkeeping. Yeah, good point. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it. Any more questions? So these are practical bookkeeping steps. And so these are some practical bookkeeping steps that help you maintain accurate financial records. Um, you can choose between cash-based and accrual-based bookkeeping. Cash-based is a more simplified version of bookkeeping but there are accrual based bookkeeping, which does more of the depreciation and long-term assets. Cash-based bookkeeping, uh, re the revenue is recorded when the cash is received. Um, the expenses recorded when the cash is paid is uh, generally simpler to maintain and understand. It's often used by small businesses for tax purposes. It may not provide an accurate picture for financial health in, in the short term, so this is if you build a client for your expenses and you're waiting for the, the payment back, this won't um, show that revenue that is pending. This is more when you receive the um, payment. Though accrual-based uh, bookkeeping is revenue is recorded when it's earned regardless of the cash is received. Expenses are recorded when incurred regardless of the cash pays. A lot of times we will receive shipment for our supplies and have to pay the vendor back. And this will recognize the expense when we receive the, and when we hear the expense instead of when we pay it to the person. It is more complex and it requires more detailed record keeping. It better matches income and expense report over the period of time. It provides a more accurate long-term view of the financial performance of the business. So we were talking about setting up the chart of accounts and um, QuickBooks. So this chart of accounts is where you put, where you plug, kind of where you plug and go. And so setting up a chart of account is very unique depending on each business. And so the more, the four categories are assets, liability, income, and expenses. But everybody's asset, liability, and income, and expenses seem to be different depending on the business you're, you're running. Um. Yes, Ismail. Uh, I was just wondering, like, what is, what should one sort of budget for bookkeeping? Well, that varies um, between the type, which bookkeeper you choose, how much expenses you have, how much transactions you have. That all varies between the business and the revenue, and it is not an easy. I'm just wondering, I could, ask. yeah, trying, because like, you're just starting off. It's like, how much money should I, should someone have set aside to actually engage a bookkeeper? Because that becomes an expense. Like, like, it, the, it is, yeah. You know, like the woman who's just starting up her, her yoga studio, right? It's like, how much really should, should they in, invest in their, of their time, right? Via money into, into securing a bookkeeper. I guess that's, that's, that's where I'm kind of stuck on some of this. So yeah, that. That, that that's a very complex answer. It just depends on the bookkeeper, your transactions, um, what software you're using. It's just everybody's different. It's one of it's there's no uh, set standard on bookkeeping and hourly wage. Some people do hourly, some people do uh, monthly. So it just depends on who you um, are. You we actually are. I think next week we're working or our presentations on on hiring a bookkeeper. And what you should ask and how you should go about um, vetting one because there are good and bad ex experiences with everything. And so next week's is going to be talking more in depth on that. And so um, setting up your, your software for accounting, uh, there's QuickBooks, there's Xero uh, to automate processes. These are some of the top 10 um, most used. Uh, accounting services. QuickBooks, I think, feel like they're the ones that people talk about the most, but these are a few other ones that are out there. Um, I've only used QuickBooks and uh, Gusto, 
larger I know a lot of larger can use sage, but these are the ones that I, as I was doing my research on them because I'm this is one I'm the most versed in. Um, these are the ones that popped out as the most um, used and highly sought out. Uh, record keeping this transactions um, their daily income expenses occur to maintain update records. Uh, it's very important also to keep your receipts and invoices. Um, you can keep them physically or a digital copy of all the receipts and categorize them um, depending on your business and how you like to do it. Some people do it by vendor, some people do it by month. It just depends on what works for you. The, the reason you maintain this is if you're audited, you want to be able to give this to the IRS and for your verification to make sure everything is cleared at the end of the month, year, whenever you're checking it, to make sure you've paid all your bills, all your bills are paid, and to make sure you've received all your payments. Um, the reconciliation of bank statement is um, one of the most crit critical aspects of bookkeeping. It's you're comparing the records of your bank statements uh, to identify any discrepancy and track any pending payments that are not set, scheduled, settled. So a lot of times you may send a check to a vendor and they have not cashed it month. So you need to ensure that that month money continues to stay in the bank account because they cash it for six months. And then you, I always put mine in a pending, pending side because they may come back six, nine months later and say, hey, I'm, I'm missing this payment. So you want to ensure that that money is always set aside to settle all your debts. And also if your um if somebody owes you money, you need to make sure it has it cleared. And so you verify that with the bank account, making sure it's it's noted in the bank account. Uh tracking accounts payable and receivable, you're monitoring your money owed and your money cash flow back. Um, this can be done in different ways depending on the system you're using. And so you want to make sure you have a ongoing list of money that's owed for you so your clients will pay you and always making sure that you're paying all your bills so you don't come up you know, with a surprise payment at some point. So uh, there's general, general financial reports. We've talked about income sheets, balance sheets, and cash flow statements. And this is to show the uh, financial health. So we're talking about balance sheets and how balance sheets are a good way to see a synopsis of how you're doing in that particular time. The cash flow shows how money coming in and out and what is paid and what has not been paid. And your income statement is more of a higher view of what's going on in your business. It's really important to review your financials regularly, monthly or quarterly, to identify trends and make informed decisions. As Simi was talking about how if you wait till the end of the year, you don't see what happens in mid-year. And it's really important to see if the decisions you're making for your business, whatever it may be, is actually increasing your profits or does your company need to switch and try a different strategy to grow? It's also really good, everybody's always worried about taxes with businesses. So it's always, it's really good to keep a good record keeping um, for taxes and to ensure that you have tax payments throughout the year, depending on your business. Some pay quarterly, some pay monthly, and some pay yearly. It's a very between if you're doing sales tax, um, payroll tax. If you're setting aside for yourself, for your Medicare, Social Security, that's another aspect that needs to be paid. It's also really important to back up your data whether you're using a software such as QuickBooks or if you're using Excel or whatnot, make sure you're backing up your data often because life does happen. And it's also really important to stay compliant in regulations to avoid penalties. And this also varies between whichever business you have. These are the more, um, these are the compliance that are needed for generally for most general businesses. So GAAP is the standards for accounting practices for businesses and record keeping. When people get into GAAP, they get really nervous with GAAP, but GAAP is more just making sure your um, 
following your the money coming in and out, making sure you're keeping all the uh, receipts and how you're paying, how you're working with your business. So Gap is more of one of the the most um, the largest form of use of compliance. It's the standard practice of accounting. And this is the Internal Revenue Code. It um, requires business to maintain accurate financial keeping for tax reporting. This includes following IRS rules of deduction, deductible expenses, income, record retention, usually three to seven years, depending on the type of document documents. So this is just, um, as we were talking about depreciation and how depreciation varies between assets and following the IRS rules. Um, so this is following that type of compliance from them. Uh, there's also employment regulation for payroll and record keeping. Employers must comply with IRS regulations for payroll tax withholding, reporting, and payment. And they also must do favor, fair, fair labor standards and Department of Labor rules to require accurate employees retaining records to ensure compliance with minimum wage, overtime payment, and employee status. So this is whether the W-2 or 1099. Um, I believe in three weeks, we're going to be doing one on payroll um, and how to work with 1099s, which is our uh, subcontractors, and W-2s, which, which are our employees, which we will, if you have a W-2 employee, you will be paying their uh, payroll tax. If you're doing a 1099 contractor, it's a little different. Um, there's, they, you don't pay their payroll tax, but you need to make sure you ensure they have a certain form at the end of the year so they can claim the income they've received. Uh, sales tax, depending on your business, you may have sales tax, you may not have sales tax. Um, as you're talking about yoga studio, she would not have sales tax on giving her classes, but if she has products she is selling, there may be sales tax on it depending on which product she is selling, have a product she is selling. Um, and there are a few taxable services that need to be taxed, depending on the state. Um, and so it's important to know if your business or your services or your supplies require sales tax to be given. Implementing these steps and understanding these steps will help ensure your bookkeeping is accurate and manageable and you're staying with compliant for state. Are there any questions? Any questions from folks? I know a, a lot of information was provided in that in that stretch. Um, is there anything that is unclear to you that you would like to review? Um, so I encourage you to ask any questions you might have. I've got a few, but I'm going to I'm going to uh, give you the, the first opportunity. Melissa? Um, can you just go back? What is the GAAP again? I was trying to take notes on that. And... You're fine. You bring it back up. Okay, thank you. It was it just a like a measure of compliance, like a way to follow it's, compliance, it's overview, just a guide. Yeah, it's a large. It's a um. Uh, it's like the larger overview for accountants. Um, okay. Uh, it's not legally required. Okay. So this is just. It's just more of a best practice. Okay. Best practice form of doing it. I feel like most most people follow a, follow a gap and usually if gap is followed, you're in compliance for the other. Um, okay. Is there a particular so, um website that this would be on or could i just google it and just google gap there's so many versions yeah, okay. of it yeah okay thank you you're welcome um just a a few comments about some of the slides um as it pertains to sales tax uh, you would want to you would want to connect with the vermont department of taxes over that um and just be aware that uh as as nakuma mentioned that uh Generally, you're going to charge sales tax on products and not services, but it's always worth double checking with them if you are doing have services if if the, if it applies. 
um, but also be aware that there are local option sales taxes. So depending on where you're selling, you might have to charge an extra percentage point. So uh, 6% is our general sales tax, but if you're for the state, but if you're in one of the towns that charges an extra uh, local option sales tax like Burlington, then you're charging seven. So just be aware of where you're selling, especially if you might be doing farmer's markets or things like that, and you need to be aware of what taxes you need to collect. Um, also, Nakuma, you mentioned uh, on an earlier slide, um, cash versus accrual accounting. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't I don't know if folks um, uh, under understand that difference enough. Um, and maybe it's worth just taking an extra minute to talk about that. Um, I, I think, and I would be curious to know, in my opinion, more my experience has been, correct me if I'm wrong, but most of the small businesses out there likely follow the cash basis of accounting. Mm -hmm. Right. So when when you when you get paid for something, that's when you that's when you count the the transaction. When you pay a bill, that's when you that's when you account for the payment of the bill. Um, and I do believe some kinds of businesses have to have to be accrual. I can't speak to which ones those are off the top of my head, um, but um, and and Nakuma, uh, the cash basis of of accounting that is on a on a like on a, on a monthly calendar, like a traditional yearly calendar, like January to December, correct? Well, it depends on most most businesses run uh, January, December, but there are some businesses that will run through fiscal years of state or federal, depending on your business and what you're doing, how you're, um, if you're working a nonprofit or you're working on a business that receives a lot of grants, mm -hmm. they may, um, they may run on, the grant may run on the fiscal year of, Whoever's providing is state or federal. Um, though cash base is usually is January, January. Cash base is usually a monthly overview. So when we were talking about comparing the um the bank account to your QuickBooks, to say we're gonna use QuickBooks for it. So you're, that's a cash base accrual. So your money came in, money went out. And so you're checking that. Accrual base comes with more complex. If you're working on a business that let's say you bill your your clients after the fact. The cure base is probably more for you for you. But if you're the type of business that service is rendered, you receive the cash back and forth, and it's very uh, fast transactions. Cash basis. Most businesses work in a cash based system, but there are some businesses you may do the service first and then bill your client, especially if you're in virtual. Um, a lot of VAs or local based um, social media marketers will do. I will do, I'll work four hours and I'll bill you for my four hours. And so a curl base is better for that because you are pending that money back and forth. Mm -hmm. But if you're um, more of a, a mechanic, you do the service, you get your money back. But some mechanics will bill you 30 for 30 days out depending on their business. And that would be more of a curl base because they're waiting for the service to come back and you want to ensure you're, so you've made that revenue. You just haven't received the revenue yet, but that is a revenue you should receive. Yeah. Um, but most most businesses will run cash base, especially if you're more immediate transactions. Yeah, right, right. Yep, that makes sense. And um, so the comparison I like to make uh, is that with a cash base accounting, it's more like how if you have a checkbook in your personal life, it's more like how that works, right? You write the check to somebody, you record it, that's when it happened, right? Um, you You get paid, your deposit comes in. On the date you put it in your checkbook, uh, and and that's when it's counted. So does that make sense? And is it a is that a good comparison, Nakuma? Yeah, perfect comparison. Yeah, it's 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 immediate the immediate like using your debit card versus a credit card. Mm -hmm. Your debit card you pay for it, it comes right out. Your mm -hmm. credit card though it's it's pending in your credit card, it hasn't been paid yet. Mm -hmm. well, good so idea. it's more of a you've accrued that debt. Mm -hmm. um, and then you pay it back. So those are the differences between the two. Melissa, you have a question? Well, I was just trying in my mind to compare it and I see cash base maybe as like a slower process, whereas accrual, you're kind of like in, inputting things before 
you receive the money or before it goes out. So it's like you're putting it in sooner than you would if it were a cash based. I, I can't think about like any budgeting. So it, and I, I understand where you're, where you're going. So let's think of your cash base. So let's say you're doing your budget, right? So you get paid yeah. twice a month and you make yeah. $5,000. Um, you're budgeting for both paychecks. So you're doing an accrual based budgeting. But if you wait to get paid and then you budget out your money, that's more cash based because you have the money in front of you and then you're using that money. So cash yeah. base is more having the money on you and accrual base is like pending money a lot of times. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Thank you. Okay. Um, also, um, Nakumi, you had a list of different programs, yeah. like accounting programs. Um, I'm I'm certainly not familiar with with all of them, but uh, just a general statement uh, about bookkeeping systems. There, there's another one called Wave that offers a free version that you, that small businesses can use, and a number of the folks I work with might use that as a starting point. Um, I think it is worth mentioning that with any software program, there's always a learning curve that comes with it. And, you know, you're you're kind of putting on your bookkeeping and accounting hat here. And so there's also different terminology. So you're so when you're first starting out, the terminology might be new and and the and the system that you're using might be new. So um, that can feel sometimes overwhelming to folks. Uh, and so it would make sense in the in a perfect world uh, to to be working with a bookkeeper to kind of get set up on that. I know Nakuma is going to probably talk about this side of things in the upcoming workshop, so I'm not going to go into detail about, but only to say that just be aware that you know there's there's these learning curves with these programs. So just kind of build that into your time frame and 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 into your self care for yourself, if you will, so you don't get too stressed out about it. Um, but it is helpful to work with a, a bookkeeper to get set up on it right from the in, in the beginning if you can. Um, and and Ishmael, a little bit to your point, uh, it, a bookkeeper will work with you as much or as little as you want, depending on your budget and your needs. So um, and in the complexity of of your situation. So. I do think, and this again probably speaks to an upcoming class Nakuma is going to offer, but it might make sense to um, kind of shop around a little bit, you know, and and connect with uh, a few different bookkeepers or accountants to get a sense of um, uh, of them working with them and and what they can offer for for pricing and for initial setup. So that's all I'll say on that. Um, last. Yeah, go ahead, Nakuma. You want to say something? I was going to say, when you're talking about, you're, I know we're going to talk about it next week too, but when you're talking about shopping around, it's really important that you you have a good conversation with your bookkeeper. They become a semi-partner in your business mm -hmm. because they're helping with your finances. And so it's really, I feel like it's really important to interview several bookkeepers to ensure they fit your business needs and your vision of your business because this is somebody you're going to turn to and ask questions to, especially if it's not something you're familiar with an accountant. So you're going to ask questions and you need to make sure you feel comfortable enough with your bookkeeper to ask what people would consider, you know, dumb questions. But it's really important that we have you have that conversation with your bookkeeper because they can present you all the knowledge in the world. But if you don't understand the reports you're receiving and they're not willing to sit there and work with you with your reports, they might not be the best fit for you. And so it's really important that it, that it is a partnership within you and your business. The bookkeeper becomes a crucial part or your account becomes a crucial part in your business. And so it is important to shop around and make sure you have a good rapport with your bookkeeper because they are helping you a lot in your business. So it sounds like it. Um, this this might be a good place to ask people who are already using bookkeepers and see and see see what their experiences of, of various people have been. So. Yeah, and the word of mouth is probably the best way for you to do it, especially if you have several people within the same um, business type of co company as yours. Some uh, bookkeepers will specialize within certain um, realms or niches, where the bookkeepers are more open. And so it's a great way to use and ask questions about that to make sure they fit who you are and your business needs. It would make sense that they would work in particular domains, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I do understand too, it, it can be challenging to find uh, a bookkeeper or an accountant that's taking on new clients. So, you know, you might want to build that into your time frame and expectation. So you might have to connect with more than you might think you would otherwise um, during this period of time. Um, so just build that into your thinking. Um, also, um, the last thing I'll mention is on uh, on taxes, on, on that slide around payroll taxes and just quarterly taxes. So, so you, you, you can, as Nakuma mentioned, you, you can pay your, your taxes quarterly, monthly, or annually. I do really encourage people to, to pay as they go, because there's been a number of clients who have a bit of sticker shock at the end of the year when they do their taxes and they say, oh my goodness, this tax bill, I didn't expect to have to pay this. Now it's a challenge for them, and now they have to pay back that tax bill plus stay ahead of their current tax bill for the for the coming year. So you want to avoid problems, you know, in business, and that's a real obvious one to avoid. So I think paying quarterly as you go or monthly um, is is the way to go to stay honest with yourself um, and avoid um, and avoid that sticker shock at the end of the year. Um, and I understand that there is a a fine, but it's it's so negligible. That's what all the bookkeepers mm -hmm. say that the that the that the fine is so negligible that not to even worry about it. Um, if you do pay, you know, at the end of the year and not not quarterly, um, you would be paying the state of Vermont and the IRS quarterly, and you and they have portals set up where you can pay uh, for that. Um, and lastly, if you do have employees. I can tell you from an unfortunate experience, that is one tax you do not want to get behind on payroll taxes. You do not want to do that. So the 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 IRS is pretty unforgiving as as far as that's concerned. So just be aware that that will and should become a priority to pay when you are um, when you have employees. Sounds like planning your homework. It's yeah, right, right, <laughs> and your cash flow. <laughs> <laughs> And every state, I don't know, most people are working within Vermont, but even within Vermont, there are several different taxes that need to be paid out of the payroll tax. There's, you know, FICA, there's um, Medicare, state tax, federal tax, and now we have a child care tax on top of that. And so depending on where your employees are, since we do border, like New York or some people border New Hampshire, Massachusetts, depending on where you're working, you need to ensure that you know what the state taxes are for each employee in a payroll tax. They vary from state to state. Great point. So that's all I got. Thanks, Akuma. Any more questions? That's all my presentation. So if anybody has, doesn't have any more questions. Next week, we'll be doing one about hiring bookkeeper. And after that, we'll be doing a payroll one. So some of these questions will be answered then too. I just didn't want to put everything in one thing. because I feel like so much information within bookkeeping and it becomes overwhelming if we add it all in one presentation. Agreed. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Thanks so much, Nakuma. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I'll just uh, follow up with Nakuma. Are there any other um, questions that are still lingering? Are there any slides that you want to go back to because uh, you found you could use just a, a, you need to review them again because you had a follow-up question or they were confusing to you? Um, any, anything like that, that would, that would be helpful. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm just feeling like the most stressful part of all of this for me is the the payroll tax, which it sounds like I need to come to that workshop. <laughs> um, but in general, is there so we we are responsible for keeping track of the percentage that goes in there? Is there like um, that? I guess I'm just feeling like taxes general or overwhelming to me, keeping track of the payroll. Um, well, most people use I the saw service. a percentage that was like, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's services um, for that. There are, I saw a percentage that was like, moments. yeah. 
Okay. And is it recommended to just get a service? Is it? I think it'll make it life a lot easier. You, I mean, you, you pay um, on one end. Yeah, you pay on one end. Yeah. Of <laughs> so. Yeah. And then some books people specialize in book in payroll and right, add right, on right. to their thing. It depends on the bookkeeper. There are several services out there that will do it also that help is helpful. Um, so it just depends on okay. your needs. Okay. But I think I think Melissa, it does mm -hmm. speak to the need to be proactive and and meet with people who can provide those services so you understand what services are provided and what the cost is going to be and to make sure that yeah. you understand when the money has to be in there for them to 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 draw to to do payroll and to cover their fees okay. of course doing that okay and then as far as when, like if we pay quarterly or monthly or yearly, does that depend on your business? Is that something that I would determine when I register my business? You don't have to determine it when you register. It's not something you tell the state, I'm going to pay monthly, quarterly, or whatnot. It's recommended to pay quarterly or monthly so you can keep up with it. Or some people just save a certain okay. percentage of their business to cover that cost at the end of the year. Um, Okay. So it is flexible in that sense for the state and federal taxes, but for payroll, there's no flexibility on when you pay that. That's when it's due. It's due. It yeah. is recommended to okay. pay as, 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 as soon as you can so you don't get the end of the year um, large bill. Because mm -hmm. it can be scary. Okay. And, and also, mm -hmm. uh, just be aware that when we say quarterly, the assumption is it's calendar quarterly, like you're covering January, February, and March, but with the with the IRS and the taxes, it's not is that, that those aren't the quarters they're talking about, right? So I can't remember what okay. the specific ones are and when they're due, but it's it you would it's not logical like you would think. So just be aware. Maybe Nakuma, okay. maybe you can confirm when the, when payments are due quarterly. I don't want to put you on the spot. It's fine if you don't, but but just be aware of that. Yeah, I believe it's like. It goes like April, May, June, I believe, but it's due in July. So you have like an extra month for that quarter, if I remember right. I haven't done, well, none of, I work mostly with nonprofits and municipalities, so I don't really do taxes in that sense anymore. Um, but I believe you have like a month leeway after it's due to pay. So it ends up being weird. So it's like a four month period instead of a three month period, um, if I remember correctly. That's easy to find though at the IRS website. Yeah. We just don't know off the top of our heads. I can let me sure I add that on the payroll one. And uh, I found that the IRS is a really great resource. Um, and the language that they speak is, you know, isn't isn't over the top in terms of jargon and complexity. So um, it's a natural place to start and they and they will talk to you about all the different taxes that are out there that may apply to you. Same with Vermont. You're actually yeah, they're actually very approachable. I mean, we always have this thought of the IRS being, you know, we have the you know, way to come to them, but they're actually very approachable. So if you have any questions, you can email or call them and they're willing to help. They want to help. So I've never had issues calling the IRS and like feeling pushed back. So they're a good spot to go to. That's good to know. I didn't, that you, that you've been able to call them and reach them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's really interesting. Business, I mean, different between like income tax, IRS, and business. I have they've not been, we've never had issues talking to them and asking them questions for clients. Right. So, yeah, they're very approachable, which I was surprised when I first called them because I didn't think it was going to be that way. Other questions, comments? Rachel, do you, are you able to put a plug in for next week's class, just the date and times and, and what's going to be covered? Are you able to, do you have that? Can sure. You? I do. Um, although Nakuma can speak more to what's actually going to be covered, but I can say that um, it'll be same place, same time, um, Thursday, November 7th. We're uh, calling it Hiring the Right Bookkeeper, uh, taking questions, qualities, and red flags to look out for. Um, so 10 a.m. on Zoom, and you can sign up with the same link you used for this, sorry, the same registration link on our website. Um, you can also just send me an email and I can add you because we already have your information. Um, but Nakuma, anything else you want to add in terms of what no. we covered? 
Okay. Well, well I'm going to stop the recording then. <laughs>